tight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Ooh. How you feeling, James? How many pizzas can you eat? How many pizzas can you eat? Oof, How New many York? late night slices can you have, brother? Come on, man. The answer for me is five a night. Woo! At around t- three in the morning. Yeah. Is that real <laughs> sweet slice time? You love that Sabaro. <laughs> that, you that was a travesty that one night, right? Love we the were Sbarro, out so James. late one night that the only thing open in Midtown mm, it wasn't open. Wasn't open. Yes. Uh it was Sbarro. It actually was when we walked when we first walked by, but you think pff, whatever we're making fun of it as we're walking by. Yeah, we're like, going, Oh please, gonna we're go gonna go to the real slice place. Sbarro in New York. That would be ridiculous, right? Yeah. Or like a McDonald's or something. That would be crazy. Yeah. But. New York. After the Yankees game. Place was a ghost town. Shut down. Ghost town. Shut down. We went to Sbarro. Closed. Closed. The fucking Sbarro in Midtown. And we were joking going back. All right. Guess we're going to have to go to Sbarro. Laughing about it. Laughing. And they had just clicked. Close the door. Nothing was open. Nothing was open. We ended up going to McDonald's. That was the only thing open. In Midtown, for Christ's sakes. It was crazy. I've never seen anything like it. I don't know why they switched uh, to that style. But, uh, I mean, I guess, I just look, feel to like be the fair, night... we were the only ones out, though, too. Yeah, but I guess I feel like, because we went out hard, dude. Every night till like three or four. Yeah. Why did I feel like I was getting slices at like four in the morning? Was I not? Was I in a different part of town? Was it a dream? I don't know. Um, but I know this right by right by Madison Square Garden. They had nothing open. Nothing. We maybe that was part of it. Fucking McDonald's one night because they don't want that spill out. Like even the one bartender that we talked to was just like, "Dude, no." Yeah. Yep. <laughs> We're like. Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yep. Don't, he's like, don't ask. <laughs> he just said no. And we're like, as we open, open the door. They were fully open. Don't there ask, people, don't tell. People at the bar, and yeah. he just said no. He said no. I'm, I'm done with this. I'm all done with this. We were like, okay. Okay. Bye. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but that was, the fact that Sabar was on the table one night was. It was a sad time, but it was our last night. You know, New York was good to us up great. until that point. I mean, took care of us. It was really great. Cradled us, yeah. drunkenly cradled us oh, into, yeah. into bed around four or five in the yeah, morning yeah, yeah, every yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. We it made great. it there somehow. We did. It's the beauty of New York, right? It is the beauty of New York. You can make it home. Somebody will get you home. Well, a, a cab, a, 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 you know, yeah. like. But somebody will the, get you home. The, yeah. ta- the, the city itself. Guides you where you need to go, yeah. and if that's bed, yep. it's bed. It will take you there. But anyway, I just fucking love it there. The McDonald's, though, uh, that you're right. We had to go to it's McDonald's. A sad night. It was, was a sad so night. Weird. All the way around, the Yankees so lost. Weird. I, but I will say this: I, look, I, I on you know a few shows ago I was wearing all green, broke the curse. Like I said, I was going to. You did. Yankees won. It, it is always magical going to Yankee Stadium, even though they didn't win. It was one of those games where they had plenty of chances. And I'll, I'll never feel bad if you, if you have plenty of chances to win. Same with Ohio State. If you, if you have chances to win and you just don't do it, what do you do? You got beat by a better team and you fucking move on with your day. Yeah. Um, but going to Yankee Stadium itself is glorious every single time. We just need some fucking pitchers. And then I think we'll be fucking great. But anyway. Yeah, it's over. I'm just CC saying. CeCe Sabathia finally retired today, by the way. Yeah, I'm just saying moving forward. Oh yeah, I think we can get there again. Yes, we need a f- we need to drop some dollars. And you were even saying they're not dropping dollars anymore. I'm mm-hmm. not really sure why, but um, they drop ha- they drop dollars on hitting. They didn't on pitching. And right, you saw. So here's what you saw in that series: best hitting versus best best pitching. Who wins? Pitching. Right. So now we playing? know what do we need to drop dollars on? Yeah. Who uh, who are they playing in the World Series? 
uh, the best pitching from the right. National League. So there is something to it, but uh, man, um, what a fucking blast. Blast. We had a great night, magical Yankee night. Yeah. Hung out with the Bronx Blues guys, diehards, the accents. They were on the show yesterday. The, you know, the the real... Don't you, when they were talking, didn't you feel like, fuck yeah, I'm with some fucking yeah. Yankees yeah, fans, Yeah, I'm in dude, New York. through and through. I'm in New York. At the Vega yeah. Salon or whatever the fuck we were at. It was like Boy. right next to the stadium. It was some fucking Dominican great. bar was the only place they would let us record in. And, and it just uh, it was fell awesome. apart and ended with us having McDonald's. Yeah. And so that night really started out great for me. And I have to say it ended... Uh, it ended. <laughs> Definitely ended in a different way than when it started, but uh, I was happy for all of it. To I'm be always great at recognizing when a night's over and just and just call it like pulling the plug. Yeah. Where I'm like, hey guys, shit's close. I'm going to McDonald's. I'm going home. You can guys can do whatever the fuck you want. Well, Dan had a had a bruiser with him, right? So I was yeah. trying to, and I was saying to you, I was trying to be courteous and be like trying nope. to help a bro out, no. right? So he's like. If we get food and get a drink, maybe the night can kind of. Sure. Nope. But you were you were very adamant that it was over. It I was over on read, all fronts. I can read people really well. Uh-huh. I could read that he was not getting laid that night. Um, and I, no I fault. Could read. No fault of his own, by the way. No, but look, I, I can read that. I can read when it's time to pull the plug very, very easily. I've, it's it's. It's almost been a gift in my life where I can just pull the plug and be like, eh, all right, cool. This isn't going down food wise, sexually, energy wise, <laughs> party wise. Like where I'm just like, yeah, we're getting the fuck out of here. That's it. Yeah. Um, you I've, did. I've always had, a, I'm not I've always had a gift. I'm not good at that. No, not at all. I will ride the night into the ditch. Yeah, you will. If that's. <laughs> you will. <laughs> um, but I pulled you away and I said, hey, we're going to stack McDonald's going back to the hotel. This Whatever happens, happens with him. I can't. You know, there's nothing more I can do. Right. The Titanic was going down. Right. Uh, and you know what it is, Trying to get women and children off at that point and just survive. But you know what it is? It's the drive in and the drive out, right? So it's like. To New York? Or to the to Bronx, Yankee right? Stadium, yeah. So driving to the Bronx first, getting there, the game, losing, and then that ride in traffic back. It, you lose all momentum for anything, right? Had we well, stayed and partied in the Bronx so a little you, bit, it would have been different, nah. but then you still need to take that. You still got to go home. Yeah. And here's the problem is everybody comes into New York City, tourist-wise, and they're like, oh, yeah, I'll just hop up to Yankees game real quick. Oh, no, no friend. It is not like going to Madison Square Garden. Oh, no, friend. You are going – the Bronx, it's about 22 miles away. The stadium's about 22 miles away from Midtown, right? Mm-hmm. So you and as are going to be in a cab for a while. Right. And – as efficient as New York City is. Which it's so, I love it. Love the efficiency of it. It's great. Fish, it's like a Chick-fil-A drive-thru. You're, you, you know, like, hey, man, I'm fucking, I'm here. I'm here for a while. So mm-hmm. when we got back into the city. Right. I knew, ah, look, we were, we were in the cab for a while. It's, it was time to pull yeah. it. Yeah. No, you're, to, right, uh, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Tell that baby to go home. I know. And I don't, I don't mean to be the dickish friend. But I can just oh, you read quite it. often are, yeah. You quite often will just because do that. I can I can just see into the future. Where I'm just like, hey man, mm-hmm. that is not a thing that is happening tonight. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna go, and no, no matter how long we stay, it's not gonna get any better at that point. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't that wasn't his bruiser. No, you you can't wish it into it. Great girl, nice girl. Great girl, nice girl. Um, not the one. Nah, for any for any of us. You need a you need a you need a slut. At that point, I know? need someone I can fucking chop it up with too, right? Like yeah. we all hang out together. That's just like the life we have yeah. right now. Yeah. So, whoever your bruiser is, she's got to be able to fucking. She's got to be on the level. Have a conversation. Yeah, you got to be on the level, dude. You got to be on the level. Cute. Yes. Super pretty. Yeah, but look, uh, not down to the fuck. I mean, there's a certain New York look where you're like, ah, all right, that girl's. I can tell that's gonna be a fucking crazy night. She didn't have that look. No. You know no. what I'm saying? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Um, she didn't have that fucking, that, that kind of desperate bartender look to her that you need in New York City where it's just like, ah, man. The thing of like, she's seen some shit. Yep. Black hair. Mm. A lot of eyeshadow. Like, you know, you know what time it is with that. You can be blonde. But you Not, gotta I, be like. How many times do you see a blonde in New York? 
I saw two. You and her. That was the only two and I one saw. one of us was down to party, yeah, 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 yeah. party, party, exactly. party. Okay, I guess you're right. When people, and I like this, like to do this. Kirill talked about it on the show a little bit of surprising people. So I like to look the way that I look and then be like, you fucking want to yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking party? Yeah. Right? Right. Because I think it's disarming. I might be wrong and might be talking about myself too much. No, not at all. I, Where like you probably think a certain thing about me. And for the most part, you're right. But sometimes. Mm-mm. Yeah. Sometimes. Hey. Hey. Sometimes. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> whereas, Anyways. Whereas, uh, you know, most of these fucking bruisers like, dude, do you got to. You gotta know what you're getting into. Right. Um, I think he knew. He should have known before the night started. Like, hey, man, I should, I should probably call somebody else. Well, yeah. But I think for the, for the night, and w- she was right. I mean, we should have all been in bed. Because that's what she kept talking about. Just <laughs> being in bed with her dog, right? So she was right. He may have chose the right person to where, where the night should have gone. I don't know. Look, if, if you're in New York... And you're out of town. You're looking to party. Again, find a fucking struggling bartender. Mm-hmm. Take her to the goddamn Yankees mm-hmm. game. It's going to be a lot of appreciation there. You know? Yeah. For one night. Are you mm-hmm. fucking kidding me? Yeah. An ALCS game, too, on top of it. To yeah. boot with those seats that we get for the sports show. Fucking Come on, man. Deep throat. Some mott sticks, Could have had fucking. Yeah. He could have had a lot. She was very daintily eating those mott sticks. Yeah. He could, he could, he could have had a lot that night if he would have just gone bartender route maybe we should sit him down maybe on the we show. should just choose maybe we should just sit him down on this show di- dissect his whole life <laughs> and really really get to the <laughs> bottom of us. do you want to have a girlfriend or do you want to fuck tonight and then i'll just let me choose it's kind of like when you and i go out to a, a, a new restaurant for the first time mm-hmm. just let me choose the whole menu true and then we're good to go like let me choose for you dude yeah no that, and i i've come around uh to that. you know you know you should have gone Jimmy's Corner. Oh, that's right. Right in the middle of the street, not yep. on a yep. corner. 100%. Jimmy's Corner. Pick a, pick a waitress out of there, and then you're Oof. good to go, or something like that. Jimmy's Corner. Yeah. Or like a, I don't know. I don't know. Right, look. Red lipstick, maybe. Let's see. Let's see if we can get him on the show, and then I can dissect his whole entire sexual life. And I could really break this down for him pretty That'd easily. That would be great. And maybe, you know, and I'm pretty, I can ask him some questions. Get get deep in there. Sure. See really, really what he's looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he could be looking for love. I'm going to be honest. It's in all the wrong fucking places. I don't think so. I really don't think so. Mm. Never know. You get to a certain age. I had this conversation. Uh, I was on a group text the other night. Shit got real. Shit got real, real the other night. Uh, Ooh, group te- real group text? Group text with uh, bros from college, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I like... Three of my friends, yeah, three of my best friends are still single, right? Um, and at age, eh, whatever, a couple summers older than you. Um, but they're older, I think, than even. Yeah, yeah. Don't, aren't your friends older? T- t- totally. Yeah. And uh, so what I said to them was, "Is my one buddy's? He, he it, like we were texting about the Ohio State game. It was on a Friday night, which is never on a Friday night, right? So it was late. We were up. You and I just got back from New York. I was just watching the game." Sure. Chillaxin. Right. Um, and my buddy was like, dude, I'm in Chicago watching this game at a bar right now. Okay. And I was like, oh, why aren't you at the game? It's actually in Chicago. Like, that doesn't make any sense. He's fucking loaded. And it was just like, you know, I just couldn't pull it together to go or whatever. And he goes, I'm going to be honest. I, I, don't even, I can't even pull it together to hit on somebody tonight. Like, I'm just okay, I'm yeah. tired. That's yeah. what he said. He goes, I'm fucking tired. Right. And, uh, and I go, well. You know, you don't have it in you. I was like, I get it. At that age, you work hard, you make a lot of money. You don't have time to be chasing ass at the fucking bar. Right. But this late in life, um, I was like, dude, I got some good advice back in the day, and I stuck to it. And I was like, but somebody sat me down and said, deconstructed the world and pussy status for me way back in the day and what you need to do and what you don't need to do. And he goes, follow this path. And you'll be correct in this life. And you will not go wanting, is what he said. And I was like, oh, well, what is the path? And he goes, look, man, 20s, have fun, dude. Don't get fucking married like the rest of your buddies who are just either getting out of high school or college or whatever, right? Because uh, a lot of people get married right out of college. Mm-hmm. And he goes, no, unless you're going bald. 
We've had that conversation before on this show, mm -hmm. way back in the day. Mm -hmm. He's unless you're going bald, got to tie it down. Twenty six, twenty seven, get the fuck out of there. Sure. His musical chairs at that point. He goes, if you feel like your looks are going to hold up, and look at your father. You know, look at your parents and understand where they're going to, where your life is going to guide you. If you think your looks are going to hold up? He goes, enjoy the twenties while you can, because uh, it's going to be awesome. You're not going to give a shit about a lot. And the things that you think that you do care about, you're actually not going to care about later on in your 30s. And I was like, oh, all right, cool. And he's like, mid-30s. Start to look for a wife. Start to settle down. Mm -hmm. That's the age because you're going to get tired. You're not going to want to go chasing ass at the bar. Not only that, it's not cool anymore at that age, right? right. You can't right. show up at your college bars chasing young ass, doing all the shit. Um, and then have kids because you can enjoy your children then at that point. And the reason why you're tired at the end of the day, it's probably because of your children. You have a good reason for it. Mm -hmm. Not because you're trying to buy some girl a fucking G&T at some strange bar trying to, you know, right. have some weird moment for the night. Because let's face it, if she's in her fucking late 30s or whatever, she's probably divorced. She's got kids and that's a whole other set of baggage on its own. Right. Mm -hmm. All of this came to fruition. And then the, the, here was the next part of the advice. And we'll see what this happens. He goes, look, 40s and 50s, treat that as your money years. Where you've got to make all the money you can possibly make. You're going to be real tired in your 60s. And he goes, then, if you're rich by the time you hit your 60s, then you can always marry younger, brother. You know, because then mm -hmm. women don't care except for about your fucking money. Now, whether or not this path is true or whatever, I don't know. But I can say from the get-go, I stuck to that. Right. Stuck to that mantra. And it's been great. And all of my friends who have done the same, the rest of them on that group thread and stuff, pretty goddamn happy where it's just like, hey, if they're tired at the end of the night, yeah, because they have children. They're with the person they actually want to be with mm -hmm. because you know at that point in your life, mid-30s is when you really know what you want, right? Mm -hmm. And how to do it and all that stuff. This is the conversation we need to have with Dan. Right. Hey, man, where is it? Are you, do you enjoy out going out to the bars? Right. Like you, like a hypothetical, let's say you were single right now. Mm-hmm. Would you enjoy going out to the bars two to three nights a week if you didn't have children? Two or three nights? Yeah. Yeah. You would? Yeah. Really? That's the problem. So you would go no, out. No, I'm joking. Um, no, I mean, it was already getting, it was getting, I was getting tired of it. Okay. Already. Because no matter what city you live in and how rad it is, you still end up going to the same places or you work with the same people. And you have the people. same night. Yeah. Same nights, same people, same work friends, same all that shit. Uh, and this is the exact conversation we had where it was just like, you know, there's two cities you can, th that's not probably true, right? Uh, New York and LA. Yeah. But even in New York, if you're working a job in the city and you live in the city, you kind of don't leave your four or five square foot yeah, blocks, like your square same blocks. Same with LA. Right. So in my years of getting tired of it, yeah, I was in Los Feliz, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you don't really leave venture out of there. there yeah. Venture out, like we didn't do Hollywood night. It would be like the only different thing would be like a late night after hours weird sure door yeah, that yeah, was yeah, open, yeah. whatever. But for easy. the most part, it was the same night yeah. every and night. This, you we see the same people, a lot of the same people. I would have the same drink. Yeah. Meet up with the same people, have the same amount of cigarettes and drinks yeah. and whatever. Not feel shitty the next day. Be alone, and you're just like, what am I fucking doing? So my buddy, that's so what my buddy said. He goes, "What am I doing? And what do I do?" I go, well, "What do I do then with that advice?" And I go, "Well, what you can do is you can make a pile of cash for the next twenty years, and then at sixty, you know, fucking settle down, do whatever the fuck you want at that point, right? Because he's stuck in it now. He's right. working a ton of hours." makes a lot of cash can't give that up either right you know so we should have dan on the show sit him down go through his entire life in a million years he wouldn't do that nope wouldn't do it in a million years he wouldn't do that uh i don't know i don't know yeah but i diagnosed my friend the other night on friday night and he goes holy fuck I'm sure he loved that and he did he goes I, he, here's the i swear to god this is what he said to me he goes i appreciate the fucking honesty he goes no one is honest about it. He goes, if dudes do I know who it is? Yeah, yeah, you know who it is. Um, brown skin man. <laughs> brown skin fellow. Calm down, bro. Well, that narrows whoa, it down to all my friends. Whoa, 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 whoa. Brown skin gentleman. I like him. Yes, yeah, so do I. But calm down, dude. Why? 
<laughs> that narrows it down. <laughs> I know. That just shows how many you know and how many you hang out with. You talking to me? Yep. No, I'm friends with a lot. When I'm saying, oh, are you? Yeah. Here's the thing. I didn't say black. I know. I said brown skin. Man. I know. Because you know that's a difference. Oh my god. It's not white. It's not black. It's a whole diff- different. Can all race. be taken away. It can all be taken away tomorrow. It huh? can't be because that's what he calls himself. So, with that. He even said, look, I can provide the brown skin. If I marry a white woman, Mm -hmm. they're going to get that dream mix, you know, that Kanye mix that you're looking for right there, right? Uh, That's just tan all the way around, and they're great. Sure. But he said, I appreciate the honesty. He goes, dude, every other person in my life, dude-wise, would lie to me and say, no, man, it's fucking awesome, dude. We're Missed it, bro. I missed it. I mean, Oh, you're living the life, brother. And I was like, no. There are some times, and I'm sure you do too, where you'll have a moment of like, you you miss it. For one yeah. flashing second. Absolutely. The, the thing of like, oh man, you can just do whatever. But the thing is, you don't do whatever. You do the same thing. You think that Correct. you're going to do anything you want to do and travel and blah, 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 but you don't. You go to the same fucking bar. You hang out with the right. same fucking people. You go to the same fucking games and da 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 da. Right. So the things that I miss personally are moments, right, in life where you're like, oh man, I did this or I did this, but I don't specifically miss a period of like oh, I did this every night. And fucking, you know what I'm saying? Right. So. Right. Uh, but he he was like, dude, I really appreciate the honesty. He's like, nobody, dude wise, is mature enough, I think, to just say fuck man that sucks or hey man you should do this or whatever like and it's true once he said it i sat back and thought about it because i didn't think about it just firing off he's one of your most fun friends Ah, like every time one of them yeah every time we go to ohio let's say sure either way i enjoy him and whatever he's like he's like the he's a fun guy and i and i hear you saying that maybe like behind the scenes he feels this way but I would not think that on the surface, and he definitely he has a good time. I will, and I will, he's a good guy. I will drop a, I, will, I will drop a fucking male secret on you. Then I would say behind the scenes, every guy, probably in their thirties, is looking for that. I don't. I, I know very very few, or I've met very few, who are just like, nope, good man, I'm fucking single, and that's it. In your thirties, okay. you're. I would say almost every dude, if they're honest with themselves, right, is probably like, hey man, I'm 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 good. Because uh, chances are, as a dude, you went harder, younger. Mm-hmm. You did some more fucked up shit younger than girls did. Um, right. So I, I would say, yes, that is, that is true. That, that is 100% true. Um, so, yeah. There's only been one, like, one, I think. But it, he had a job that moved him to city to city to city all the time. And he was doing great fun shit. And it was just like, yeah. Right. Uh, but at the end of the day, yeah, he, he was the same eventually and came around and was just like, that was stupid. You know? Okay. Um, but Dan, I don't think, would answer those questions. He's one of my, my, my beef fries, obviously, my best friends. But could you imagine if we had him on the show and did this? <laughs> he would. This might be the show that he kills himself. I think, <laughs> I think everybody. He would be like. No, dude. I think everybody, if you, because look, everybody at home has probably got that one friend where you're just like, hey, man, you want to sit and talk about this? Let's talk about your relationships. They're like, no. No. I'm good. Nope. Don't want to do it. Because then you start making up people, you know? Who you want to be. Like Pierre Delecto. Who's that? You just do it, just to do it. Come on. Everybody's talking about Pierre today. Pierre Delecto. Mm mm. You don't know who Pierre Delecto is? No. Come on. Come on. Well, I might have to name the, the episode. This is Pierre Delecto. Um, Mitt Romney, of all fucking people, mm-hmm. got popped for having a burner Twitter account that he used to rage against people who raged against him on Twitter. And his name was Pierre Delecto. I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. And Why what's wrong French? with it? Why was he French? Why not, dude? That's weird, man. Why not? That's weird. I know a lot of people with burner accounts uh, who do that shit. I, Twitter's a hellhole anyways, and I just don't fucking care. But, yeah, if it's uh, on Twitter, who fucking cares? Kevin Durant cares? got popped, too, with, an, with, with one. where He was talking back to fans and people like that saying... Do you know what his name was? I forget what it was, 
but they found it anyways some reporter found pierre delecto today <laughs> and it's been trending all day long everybody's talking about pierre delecto pierre delecto oh my gosh what would yours be that's what i was thinking about i was like it would probably be beef wellington i'll be beef wellington i like it pink in the middle <laughs> i like it pink in the middle who ordered the beef <laughs> wellington <laughs> um uh, but yeah Whenever I see a Bleave. weird one, mine would be Believe. I think Believe Northcutson. <laughs> believe North Northcutson. <laughs> Just standing up for everything that that you believe in. Yeah, that I believe in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> believe. <laughs> believe North Northcutson. <laughs> that would be awesome. I just didn't think Mitt Romney had the name Pierre Delecto in him. Yeah, like, deep hey, down. I know, and I, I didn't get that from the documentary either. I didn't see a Pierre D- Delecto deep, deep down inside. Um, so it's one of those things where you look at it and you're like, fuck is Pierre Delecto? Why does everybody keep talking about Pierre Delecto? I love it. And then boom, it was his so burner much. account. Uh, yeah. Uh, before we get into the sponsors, though, I want to tell a, a quick story about uh, New York. Um, one last one, because we were up... Uh, we got to hang with Post Malone, do the whole thing. Mm-hmm. No, we didn't get the interview. I think no. did, did I tell this on Trinket Bros News? Maybe. Yes. Uh, um, and and the other show that we did there, but yeah, okay. so I didn't did. happen. Okay, didn't, Might happen. Look, it, it, yes. Not sure. I, look, he gave me his number. We had a fucking awesome time. At the Hung game. out with him and actually Cowboys talked game. to him. Talked it to him for a long time. It just wasn't recorded and rad, dude. It's just uh, look, people are fucking busy, and we talked about this. I think. However, my child. Who's also your child? Yes, you babysit, my child. Him. you babysit him. Yeah, but more than my child. I think you babysit him um, sometimes. You were yeah. my vessel mm-hmm. for for me creating life. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there's a song that he loves, obviously from that Spider-Man movie. That I'm a sunflower song. Yep. So when we went to the Pierre or the uh, whoa, Pierre Delecto show, <laughs> I almost said Pierre Malone. I almost said Pierre Malone. Pierre dude. Malone. Whoopsies. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe that's his burner account. There you go. Pierre Malone. When we went to Buzz Malone's show, um, I shot a little video because we had crazy, amazing seats, obviously, um, of that song for him so he could watch it. And uh, so when we got home and I gave him the, the phone and I said, hey, buddy, here's, here's the, the video. Here's mm. the song you love. You know, and he watched it and he was nodding his head and then it just stops. And then he just looks up at me with the phone. And he's just like, I don't understand. Why weren't you on stage? I was like, me? Mm-hmm. Your, fa- your father? Why mm-hmm. wasn't a, I was like, well, I was taking the video for you, buddy. And I was sitting in the, in the front row. Um, and another friend of his has shown him a picture uh, from earlier. Because mm-hmm. I was at the Cowboys game with him the day before. Of me and Post Malone at the show together. And he goes, well, you were with him. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, he's like, you took, you took a picture with him, so why, why weren't you on stage with him? Mm-hmm. And that was like the first moment where you're like, man, is he starting to realize what dad does for a living? Or does he not understand? Well, And I can't tell, and I didn't know what to tell him in that moment. Because I've made a bunch of rap videos that he's watched on YouTube. You know? Right. Or that he's watched on the phone. But I think in that instance, you say, I'm not I did. a rapper. Yes. I did. This isn't my show. I did. But it's. It, it, I'm not Post Malone. Well, sorry. Here's the thing because he loves like Waffle House Waitress and all that stuff, mm-hmm. right? One could argue, yes, I could have been on that stage very easily, Chase. Okay. So this is my worry. In his uh, mind. So did you. It sounds a little bit like you <clears throat> kind of beat around the bush while you weren't up there. I didn't. There. No, I didn't do it. I'm and not gonna, you didn't I'm quite not gonna just say, like, I'm in the audience. No, I'm going to lie to him. I, I'm not going to lie to him. I, I said, look. Uh, dad, dad was in the audience. I took uh-huh. the video for okay, you because okay, I knew okay, you okay. loved this song okay. and did it. Mm. However, in my own mind, I was like, ah, I get it, you know? Right. He, he thinks that maybe I could, I could pop in for a verse. Right. You know? Maybe. And we won't take that away from him just yet. <laughs> no. Right? Because you know he fu- will learn that. You know the hilarious soon. thing? Yeah. He'll learn on his own. He'll learn on his own. He'll watch these videos and Dad's be like, oh, Dad, you definitely weren't on. You should not be on the stage with Post Malone. Yeah. Like, that would be weird. But you You're have your own. Definitely not good enough. Own stage for that. And probably when he's old enough to go to a show and drink at a show, it'll be massive. Yeah. Well, I. So it, it, here's part of the reason I bring this up is when I was a kid, my dad used to bring out the bands, and he was like, "Hey, it's 
fucking TK Patterson from KZ106, right. and here's so and so, and they're amazing. And I was like, oh, those are your buddies. Th- this mm. has to be your best friends, you know, right? Mm. And, and like, eh. he's like, no, dad kind of introduces them, yeah. but he's he's kind of friends with them, like, you know, whatever. Right. And I was like, ah, I didn't know. I didn't know until later, you know, right. years later, but I just assumed it, even though he told me. He was like, no, I'm, you know, whatever. And I was like, ah, sure you are. You're my, maybe dad's being modest right now. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. But he'll learn later. That his right. dad's yeah. pretty worthless, you know? Well, that he's not Post Malone, <laughs> you know? But um, for now, I like that he puts you on the same pedestal. It's nice. Category, it's right? Nice. How, by the way. Yes, I'm not Post Malone, but how great was that fucking show? How great was he live? He was great. Jesus Christ. He's such a weirdo. He's uh, on another planet, that guy. Um, of greatness. He's awesome. Uh, if Go see a live show of him. Holy shit. It's, it's a show. It's a show, and you're definitely surrounded by all different types of people. Yes. I mean, the diversity mm-hmm. of the crowd. And I was I was trying to think like is it because of the diversity of the music because it's he's not a he's not a rapper. It's diverse, but he's also like made it to a level now that there's like moms, college girls, dads. With you saw it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You saw it. All Uh, of it. So he's definitely he's in a Weezer moment right now. He's having a Weezer moment where he literally appeals to everyone. To everyone. Yeah. And he's in like a Today Show crowd, and you know they're playing his music on the Today Show. They're playing it everywhere for their intros and stuff. So everywhere, he's definitely Yankees game played it. I think when I watched the show, I was sort of wondering how he felt about that. Like, if we were to do a show, I, I mean, I, I probably wouldn't ask him this because you never know what the answer is, right? And you never know if they actually get it yet. That he's definitely crossed over. From like being like this cool kid that nobody said he could fucking do it and he was doing it on his own and White Iverson comes out and like Yeah he's got his like small group and he's cool within his like, you know, community. And now he looks out at the crowd and I just wonder how he feels about that. Well Because he is absolutely at this point right now, probably the biggest artist across all genres. On the planet. Literally right now. On the planet. On the planet. Yes. And how does that feel to walk out and see me what? next to like a white little fucking college girl and like, you know, all, all different types. But how does that feel for him? Here, I don't know. Here's my biggest fascination with trying to get him on the show is y- you, you rarely get to talk to somebody in the, the whitest, hottest moment of their life where... Usually you talk to people and it's about stories they have, mm-hmm. right? Um, things that yeah, they've done. Yeah, I don't know if he's done. able to process right now what's going on. Well, I, asked, I, I did ask mm-hmm. when we were hanging out. Mm-hmm. I just said, hey, man, are you aware of, of everything that's going on? He's like, not really. And he's like, I'm sure there will be a day, you know, because uh, you're in it. You know, you're, you're doing live shows every single night and you're in it. You, you don't really know, man, because you're not... Here's the thing. If you look out at that crowd and you mm-hmm. see it every night, like mm-hmm. crowds are crowds, right? Mm-hmm. So, f- fuck, man. You're just, somebody's, you're getting up, you're waking up, you're doing a show, you're waking up, you're doing a show, you're waking up, you're doing a show. Um, I, you don't really have time to step outside of it unless it's like an award show, mm-hmm. you know, and you win like 19 Grammys or something. Like, um, you probably won't know until later on, right? That's what, like, every athlete we've had on, on the sports show. But I say Weezers because they uh, are famously the ones, which I say all the time, but they're famously the ones that have said publicly that the one day that they walked out and saw that fucking oh, yeah, 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 yeah. crowd, they were like, that's it. In a good way and in a bad way, right? But I, I, so you I, go, I, all right, we've made it. Yeah, but as a musician... That's all you can ask for, one would think, in this life, is that everyone of all backgrounds, ages, races, everybody loves your music. Yes. Yes. So, I I don't know how. I think. I think. Right? 
I the think. only the only one that it felt weird to me again was and ironically it was the same way with um fucking when we were supposed to do the interview in raleigh with post Malone, the 21 savage when he walked out and it was all white people it was like 10 black people and yeah. i was like now that would be weird to me of like hey man what do you do with this mentally but Where- i think post is the same i think that's i don't know i don't know i don't know, I don't know. but either way Love to have him on and discuss it one day. But uh, if you have a chance to go see him live and he's in your city, I highly recommend it because it is crazy and awesome. Awesome, And uh, it is every genre of music you could possibly imagine. And it's fantastic. Uh, You know what else is fantastic? Jabe's our sponsors. Talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Drinking bros. And you forward slash drinking bros. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Forward slash drinking bros. 36 months. Pay as you go program. No interest. No interest for you. Why are you on the, why are no you on the stage, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> Dad, but I don't get it. Why aren't you on the stage? That's why, son, right there. <laughs> Because I can't even, because I can't, I can't even, even off the cuff come yep. up with a yep. fucking yep. ghost bed jingle. Boy, you can get a mattress <laughs> at home if you want one. Hey. Uh, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. That fucking page you go program is like 38 bucks a month. 38 bucks a month. Bex? Bix a month. Ooh, bix. Um, Yeah, look, a Post Malone ticket will set you back with a mattress will these days. White hot that guy is. White, White. hot. White. Huh. Um, they get pillows. Uh, I think they get new ones, which is why I'm saying that with curiosity. I think I think I saw them on the site the other day. I'm gonna uh, have to look well, into we it. Got some new ones, yeah. yeah so the cooling ones, yes. But yeah. Um, and look, they got sheets, fucking adjustable bases, all of it. If you were military or a first responder, you get fifteen percent off, Jabe's forever. For As life you should, on the store, dude. bottom of the store. Every As fucking company should. should do that, but they don't. Um, so, F them. F them, James. F them. Uh, next up, we got a little strikeforceenergy.com. Ooh, we did it. Had to boom, do boom. it. Boom, boom. Triple Who pulled one out when we were in New York? Two people pulled out strike forces in New York. Um, it was the Felix Gray guys, and then I yes, think right. um, the Bronx Blues guys, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, Brian? Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Uh, I love kissing titties is fantasy football name. <laughs> Brian Korpowski. <laughs> um, you beat him in the championship last year. He was still pissed My about boy. it. That's so funny. Uh, Strike Force Energy. Look, man, this, this shit's everywhere. Everybody's drinking it. Uh, no carbs, no sugars. Lasts longer than five hour energy. You pop it open, squeeze it into uh, any liquid available, and you're good to go. Um, the White Claw, dude. Whew. Put that in a little uh, white claw. You can really feel your life come back to come back to where it should be. Feel your life come back to life. Yeah. Feel your life come back to life. That should be their new slogan. Yeah. Gosh. It's really good. Be really good. Trademark that it's now. Really strike force because someone else is going to take it. Oh, yeah. Just bring your life back to life. Uh, it's strikeforceenergy.com. Promo code revolution. 20% off. 10 pack. 40 packs, 750 milliliter bottles. Do that shit. Neo, 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 neo. Last but not least, straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you right? Oh, yeah. Uh. Oh, boy. Uh, it wouldn't come out. No. That, you were feeling the Oof. repercussions of you that guys. right now. Jabes. You guys. Jabes. I'm old. Yeah, shouldn't be out at the bars. Shouldn't be out at the bars you know. till fucking 4 a.m. Doing I mean. it. Shouldn't be doing it, J-Balls. Fucking doing it. Um, just go to straightrazors.com and do it. I promise I'm going to record the, the Damn It Bob song. I keep getting messages about it. I will record do that. Do you? And, do yeah. you keep getting messages about it? A lot. Hmm. Damn it, Bob. Damn it. Damn yeah. it. Damn it, Bob. Do ya? Wait till that drops, Jabes. It is over for you. In your whole family. Why? Just because it's going to be a fucking international success, you know? You'll be Post Malone's guest? Probably. Probably. I'll damn probably it, Bob. Opening for, yeah, Post Malone. Damn it, damn it, damn it, Bob. 
Uh, <laughs> go to straightrazors.com today. Get yourself a kit. Yeah. We're getting around that time again where you need to get your father something for his stocking. Are you going to grow the the mo? The mustache, yes. yes. Grow the mo? I, I have a... I think one more thing I have to do, and then I'll do it. We'll see. A cryptic, okay. Yeah, we'll see what it is, Javes. Uh, then I'm going to get the mustache wax, the the beard oils, the conditioners, all of it. I get to relax my shit. It's straightrazors.com. If you're worried about using a straight razor, use a safety razor, and the promo code REVOLUTION is 20% off, and that's always good every single time. Um. I want to talk about Rolling Stone. My fucking computer f- uh, froze up. We got we got fucking new interwebs in here. We're getting fiber today up in this bitch. Oh, is it like working? Uh, mine is not. But, okay. Um, I so will... I have it in front of me. The, so Rolling Stone magazine came out with their list of top 100 singers of all time today, and I'm f- this is fucking wrong. It's wrong because I'm wondering what they're going off of. Because is it voice? Should be. That's what a singer does. Cause we're we're looking at a we're looking at a Bob Dylan at number seven. Yeah. So I'll go I'll go one through uh let's just go one through ten. I mean, just just to give a little idea of what no, they're I I'll I'll run down the top twenty real quick, lightning fast. Oh, okay, I'm not gonna go, go. in big descriptions, okay? All right, great. One, Aretha Franklin. Fine with Fine. that. Fine. Two, Ray Charles. Obvi. Fine with that. Three, Elvis Presley. Not no. really. No, shouldn't do that. Uh four, Sam Cooke. Fine. Fine. Five, John Lennon. Nope. No. Asshole. Get out um, of my fucking face. Not because he's an asshole. Fa- oh, hate him. His voice uh, is not worthy of number five of all time. Hate him. And wrote that song, remember? Yep. <laughs> yeah. The super racist one. <laughs> uh, six, Marvin Gaye. Got it. You bet. Seven, Bob Dylan. Get your f- fucking face out no. of here. Love him. Now, Love if you're him. going to say greatest songwriter of all time, probably Bob or, Dylan. Or, again, the criteria doesn't seem to be voice nope songwriter uh should be for bob dylan might voice be of generations more. sure yeah um eight otis redding sure yes thank uh, you nine stevie wonder sure eh, okay 10 james brown no all right eh, maybe uh paul mccartney no paul mccartney 11 no 12 little richard no uh-uh. not for me uh 13 roy Orbison. Eh, all right interesting voice i do i very, do very love, much so, yes, yes yes when you hear it, it's unmistakably him right 14 al green fine of course 15 robert plant huh? robert plant should be a lot fucking higher dude yeah i go with that i go with it i go with it uh robert plant should be top five absolutely that guy's voice is phenomenal um and is incredible um 16 at mick jagger right I love Mick Jagger. But no. I like Mick Jagger for his theatrics and everything else. He has a great voice, not a top 15, 16 He actually doesn't even have that great of a voice, but he is a great, it does the job, sure. Tina Turner's at 17. Okay. Uh, And here's the reason I'm going top 20. It's because of this one at 18. Freddie Mercury should be number one with a bullet, no question. Are you kidding me? Oh, I'll go Aretha. You'll give. You'll. I'll give. Well, him. here's the thing. You, you first of all, you you got to separate men from women. You can't do that. That's um, okay. Because it look. I think with a voice you could. But you're going octaves, and all of that other shit, right? Maybe Freddie Mercury is the best. Maybe he is number one overall. Mm-hmm. And it's not because of that fucking movie. I can tell you that. I would have I would have said this regardless of of the goddamn movie coming out, Bohemian Rhapsody. That doesn't even have anything to do with it, right? I think so, but Twitter does not. So because of Twitter and the movie and how popular the movie was, everybody was like, "Freddie Mercury, watch the fucking movie, watch the movie." Hey man, it is beyond the movie. Go look the stripped down vocals, and I've said this a million times, and I'll say it a million more. Pull up the stripped down vocals for Under Pressure where it's just vocals, isolated vocals only, on YouTube with him and uh, Bowie. Bowie. And tell me that's he not, he's the greatest ever. Uh, Bob Marley at 19, no way. Nope. No way. Smokey uh, Robinson, no thank 20, you. Nope. Johnny Cash, 21, right? I'll, and I'll stop there. Johnny Cash. It's hard because, okay. Super interesting voice. And 
I could you could bump that up for me. But this list, man, come on. How is Freddie Mercury not up there? Um, and then, I mean, look, you start scrolling down to like fucking Van Morrison at 24. Whitney Houston is 34. Whoa. I forgot about Whitney Houston. Like, you know what I mean? Damn, dude. You could put Whitney probably at fucking two, man. Obviously, dude. Maybe one. This is a little bit of Jesse and Ross. You could have gone. But... Not at all. You could have gone. You could have gone Whitney and Freddie Mercury, and I, and I would have been happy with that. Sure. Because I think Whitney could probably outsing Aretha Franklin. It's close. Uh, it's very close. It, they're different. They're very different. Yeah. They're different singers, so I, I'm not sure I'd be on board with that. And it's like, dude, you got like Kurt Cobain at 45. No, dude. No, he could not sing. Kurt Cobain could not sing. Uh, no. He did something interesting and gravelly with his voice, but, you know. That, that was not like a gifted singer. Christina Aguilera at 58. Yeah. Huh? What? You put uh, Aguilera's probably top 25, I would say. You know what I'm saying? Right. Tom York, I mean. Tom York, interesting, but not. Interesting, but not great. Yeah, Dolly Parton. I mean, come on. Roger Daltrey, man, at 61, lead singer of The Who. Oh, Steve Perry. Come on. Oh, shit. Are you kidding me? Steve Perry should have been top 10. At least top 20. Fuck. Is he on this list? Yeah, he's 76. Fuck you. That's terrible, man. Adele. Adele. Dude, you're getting Adele. Holy mo! I mean, he's, she's she not even on here. I don't think she's on this list. I don't even think she's on this list. She's not on top 100. Adele's not even top 100. That on is fucking crazy, isn't it? John Fogarty at 72. You could have gone him Lennox. higher. Lennox. Is 93. She's Axel Rose at 64. He could barely sing. Joe Cocker, I get down with. Not a great voice, but so fucking awesome. And Joe um, Cocker, they fucking deleted out the cock. Like, are we there as a society that you put four stars instead of cock and cocker? Dead serious. That's what I got on my fucking thing. No, you don't. Dead serious. It's right Holy there. Holy shit. I don't. I'll put it up in the camera I don't. so people can see if you're they watching the, the video show. Here. Yeah. Um,. It's like you bleeped out the word cock and cock. Like his fucking name is Joe Cocker, dude. Wow, that's fucking Give him four stars. Crazy. Um, yeah, how is Adele not even on? I don't know, man. I saw this thing and I was just like, there's no way we're doing this today. We did this with the albums a few weeks ago. Um, yeah, no. I, it's just, who Wasn't did right. this? Wasn't right. Who did this? What's your name? What's your home? What's your home address? It's fucking Steve Perry. I'd like oh. to have a word with you. <laughs> Whoever made this list. Yeah. Uh, Someone um, older, for sure, made the list. Still, how do you not put... Come on, man. Someone older. What what, what are they, 98? I think they were probably in their 60s. Jesus, man. Probably in their 60s. That's why Rolling Stone is not going to have a magazine anymore. Yeah, not gonna, not gonna, not gonna, not gonna be here anymore, Rolling Stone. <laughs> Keep doing stupid shit like this. Keep this fucking shit up, Rolling Stone. Yeah, losers, dude. Fucking throw on Journey. Tell me about Steve Perry's voice, dude. <sighs> Come on, just Freddie Mer- Mercury. Not even. So, all right, let's let's go this then. Are we in agreement? Onesie twosies, guys and girls. At guys, one. I'm at Freddie Mercury. Yeah. Toosies, I'm at, I'm at Steve Perry, probably. Yeah, and that's, that's purely voice. I mean, I don't even really love Journey. I don't Journey. Even, he's just a great singer. But my God. You, you know what? Throw it three. This is, this is going to fucking tear your tits off. Don Henley. Yeah, I mean. Eagles? Boys yeah. of Summer? I mean, that, that guy's voice is. It's interesting, funny. though, because then now you're getting into preference. <clears throat> So we need to go from no. Pure I hate the fucking eagles. Technical. I hate the eagles. I think his his voice is amazing. You know I hate the eagles. I love the documentary of the eagles. It's the greatest rock doc ever. But I hate the eagles. I don't. I've. I never throw on an eagles album when I'm writing ever. I never. Right. Hate the eagles. But I can. Un, I. I understand greatness and like Don Henley is that dude, man. The well, guy's got honey and his voice. Yeah. Uh, girls. 
I'm gonna re, I'm gonna re I'm gonna reorder this now and say Whitney's at one. I Definitely. Will, I will put Aretha at two. I will put Adele at three. And that is all I'm having in this conversation. All right. You? Yeah. I mean, I didn't. The band could have been on there. Um, right? What, the lead singer of the band? Yeah. He's, he's good. He's not. Oh, dude. Wasn't, wasn't the greatest of all time. He's great, but he's okay. not. So, yeah, I would definitely say Adele needs to be on there. Whitney, Aretha, you know. That's top three in my eyes. Yeah, Freddie definitely needs to be on there. Um, same. I mean, we can we can definitely be in agreement. I don't think Don Four. Henley, but because then you're getting into preference stuff where yeah, I'm not. You I'm know, not at all. I think. I'm, look, I put Steve Perry on there. I'm not, I'm not a Journey fan. Um, I, I'm talking about voice quality, male wise, and then Robert Plant would wrap up that top five for me, where it's just that's and it's like Creed wasn't even on here. I mean. Scott Stapp, <laughs> you're a big Stapp fan. Um, yeah. You know, it's like. Stapp in the name of love. It's Ban. Who's um, that? Bare Naked Ladies. Interesting voice. b l Of a generation, yep. don't you feel? Ray Charles, though, I get it. Like, yeah. Yeah, definitely. He would We're, be up there. Yeah. Oh, I think he would be top, top. He's up there for sure, man. Otis Redding is one of my all-time favorites, so yes. I, get, I get that one. Yep, so do I. Um, but man, that, that, when I saw that today, I was just like, oh, you're asking for trouble, but maybe that's what you're just trying to do anyways. Yeah. With this shit where you're just like, yeah, fuck At it. this point, it's like, who told, Kirill told us too, like, uh, Starbucks purposely oh, writes your name wrong. That's it's the like, greatest story ever. I didn't yeah, know that. Writes your name wrong so that you take a picture of it. Yes. And go like, uh, and the, uh, because it's the greatest marketing days, tool ever. Mm -hmm, and it's. Brilliant. That they will misspell like your name on a cup at Starbucks. Purpose, so you will even, take a so picture like and be Jessie. like, oh, yeah. I guess I'm Jussie today. I was J E S S I C E. Oh, How would you thing. even. Jussice? I was Jussice. Uh, and I almost took a picture, but then I go, fuck you, Starbucks. Yeah, you knew. I didn't know. Fuck you. I'm not going to do that. But it's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, I didn't how know. How many pictures do you see of like, and oh, I guess comments? I'm blah, blah, blah. And today. how many comments are you going to get on it? Yeah. Uh, it's Smart. brilliant marketing, and I never thought that in a million years. Way no. to go, Starbucks. So stupid I am. With my name, though, it can only fuck it up two ways. Right. It's either Russ, or uss or Rose. I'll put fucking Rose right. on there, and I'm like, good right. luck, because it's four letters, dude. Yeah. And after Schwim, Schwimmer came out, Schwim oh, Dog yeah. as Ross, friends, yeah. can't fuck that up, dude. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, now I can just drop that Rosses and friends. You can't fuck it up. Yeah, exactly. Um, and if they do, then you're like. Mm. And I prefer not to get a Starbucks, obviously, because Black Rifle Coffee. But uh, oh uh, yeah, well fuck them. But, but there's nothing you can do because it's in a lot of hotels where you're just like, all right, I'm sleepy jeans. I know. I'm gonna throw on some sandals, go down the lobby, and grab a uh, Starbucks. Go back to the room. Or whatever. I mean, I'll go. Off. I'll go whatever's the closest. Unfortunately, so it, it could be Dunkin'. When you're out of town. It could be Starbucks. Yes, yeah. when I'm out of town. Yeah, at when you're home. Out of town. It's Black Rifle oh. all the time. And even if Dan brings, like, the coffee and, you know, is able to make it in the hotel for us, I'd be down with that. Sure. But he's definitely not been doing that. <laughs> Since we talked shit about Dan earlier today, I'm going to talk, talk a little more shit. He brought in uh, some $80 a pound Guatemalan fucking Ethiopian, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know. It's made from... You know, hopes and dreams of babies. Yeah, bone marrow of small elk or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, this is the greatest cup of coffee you'll ever have. You know, because um, he's a real coffee guy. Yeah. Whereas I'm perfectly fine with Black Rifle, and that's it. I'm, I don't need to try anything else in this mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Coffee's great, gets me going. I'm mm -hmm. I'm good enough, right? Mm -hmm. But I still put a little uh, juice in it. Yeah. Uh, be it in the form of uh, sugar free butt fuckery whatever it is whatever it is i'm drinking mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh what is it uh coffee mate it varies but yeah yeah whatever right whatever sugar free mm -hmm. pump it in there mm -hmm. pump it and dump it in mm -hmm. there and i'm good to go yep so he was like man this is the best coffee you'll ever have you know right tasted it and i was just like 
Still fucking coffee. <laughs> Went. I tasted it. Was really good, actually. It was great. I'm sure it was for you guys that that, that enjoy that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. I waited for him to use the bathroom. Went right to the fridge, dumped out some fucking sugar-free uh, coffee mate into Ooh. it, so I could drink the goddamn coffee. Otherwise, I don't want. Did to throw he know it that? No, Oof. and he might now. But You're gonna know now. Yeah, I did. Because we're dedicating this whole show to him, I guess. Well, we for want some them reason. to New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we went with him. We spent a lot of time with him. We keep talking about Anthony. Either way, um, I put your boyfriend. Well, because it was your guys' anniversary. I put uh, put a little Postmates in it, whatever the fuck that is. Postmates, yeah. Whatever. I'll dump anything in there. Sure. In a pinch. Gosh, you know what dude, I did? Dude. You know what I did in a pinch once? This is terrible. There's too many words to cl- to to get grasp onto there. Y- you know what I did in a, in, a, in a pinch once, James? What'd you dump out in a pinch? Um. Uh, this is gonna be a real loaf. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a real fucking it's be a real baguette. Loaf you can yeah. snack on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, we didn't have anything at the place we were at, right? And I was like, man, I cannot drink black coffee. I just cannot do it. I've, there's got to be something in it. Right. There was no milk, no sugar, no creamer, no nothing. All I saw on a on a hotel table was like a a child's trick or treat Snickers bar. So I just cut that in in uh, half. Okay. Plopped it in there, oh. and then just stirred it around. So at least it was something other than just black coffee plopped and plopped it. Plopped it in, in there. there. There's there's like peanuts and stuff like rolling around oh, in there. Every so it, it melts pretty. You're fucking gross. It, dude. it melts pretty quickly. Yeah, right? you're disgusting. It's surprisingly quick. Quick. Yeah, you're gross. Right? Here's the beauty of it. When I finished it and tossed it. Um, I, like I was getting ready to toss, but it was on a table, and like a like a waiter was cleaning up. Like breakfast was over at this hotel, mm-hmm. and a waiter came over and was like, "Oh, hey, do you want the rest of this?" And I was like, "Oh, no, I'm done." And he's like, "Oh, sorry, it just feels like there's something in there." Um, and he opens up the top of it to go and throw it away. There's, a, it looked like a turd, a mm-hmm. melted up turd of mm-hmm. Snickers bar, and the the bottom of it. And I didn't, I didn't know what to say to him at that point. I was like, "I'm, we don't have any sugar." That's uh, all I can blurt out. We didn't, we didn't have any sugar. And he's just like, oh, oh okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, just a little boy. ploppy piece of Snickers bar stuck to the bottom of a thing. I can't. That's, that's how much I can't drink black coffee. Wow. Just a little ploppy piece of Snickers bar in there. Yeah, you just, you just dumped that, dumped that Snickers out in a pinch. Put that little loaf little up plopped. in there and just plop, ploppy. Plopped it right into the, and it made that little bloop. Yes. Little noise right yeah. in the in the thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, That's how much mm-hmm, I hate it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, uh, don't tell him this story, obviously, but I did put the coffee mate inside of that eighty pound Ooh, of whatever. In trouble. Yeah. And it was shipped in from another country, and it had like some, you know, whatever those foreign labels are, of like that it, that it went through customs. Mm-hmm. I was like, whoops, whoopsies. Uh, more importantly, though, James, it was our anniversary in New York. Yours and Dan's? Yours and mine. Thank mm-hmm. you. You're welcome. <laughs> Are you wanting me to say thank Six you? Six years, James. Yes. Six um, years of magic. Yes, it was, an, it was a perfect anniversary night. We had two full dinners, and it was awesome. <laughs> we had fun. And that was exactly what I wanted to do. New York's amazing. It is. God damn it. It is. Uh, we uh, spend many of our anniversaries in New York. Yeah, not on purpose. Uh, books and meetings and... And work and stuff takes yeah. us there. But if I were to choose, and we've said this before because I grew yeah. up by the beach. We live by the beach now. For me, going to the city is like a getaway. It's great. Yeah. It's definitely different. And awesome. And oh, I yeah, love yeah. it. Love the energy. I love the whole fucking shit of it. I love all of it. I love the dirt, the noise. Yeah, the city lights, the cars, the streets, the smells. Yeah, so I'm glad loafs. I got to go. And uh, we got a lot of work done and, and also partied, which is my perfect combo as well. We did. We met with a lot of our sponsors as well. And uh, fuck, man. I, I guess I can tell the story now. Um, we were supposed to have Ray J on the show. 
um, oh, on that's right. Drinking Bros, right? Yeah. And the book blew up and we ended up going, I did go, I did go to a couple signings or whatever. Right. And uh, seven weeks, by the way, New York Times bestseller list in a row. You're welcome. How is this part of the story? This, here's, here's where shit gets crazy. So with Ray J, he does, we do buyraycon.com mm-hmm. on Drinking Bros. Mm-hmm. We were supposed to do an interview with him. That got pushed. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, I apologize, you know, whatever. And uh, they were like, look, he's, he's very, very busy. Um, per, you know, we're, we'll have to wait till this is in L.A. sometime to get this done, whatever, right? And I was like, oh, man, I know he's busy. He's got the headphones. He just sold his shares in, like, Bird or whatever. Oh, right. A scooter for, like, $2 million or something else. But that, I, it was more than that. They were like, he's super busy on this. He's working on this thing, and it's a big deal or whatever. And I was like, all right, cool, man. I, I don't know what it is. Right. Today it comes out. Suge Knight signed over the life rights to Ray J to produce his biopic. Does Ray J have experience in that? He's produced some things before, but like Mo- movies, shows. No, I, I think shows. Yes, mm-hmm. I think he was a producer on those VH1 shows. Okay, but that's a big boy guess right there. Yeah, I mean, what a what a crazy movie that would be. If he decides to say what really happened in all these situations, because he's going to die in jail. So why not at this point? That's it, right? He's done. Y- yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's, I think he's in his 60s, and he's got a life sentence for killing that dude on the NWA okay. movie. Remember, he drove mm-hmm. over that guy and then mm-hmm. the other guy? Mm-hmm. There's footage of it, which is pretty rad. But um, Let's say he says, fuck it all. And tells every story he knows. As I guarantee you, we don't know Oof. half of the stories that, that are out there the currently. That would be the right thing to do, but who knows? Like the Vanilla Ice story hanging him off the side of the building. Mm-hmm. The Dr. Dre thing. What, ha- what really happened there? Right. What was it? Right. Uh, how crazy did things get at the height of death row and all that other stuff? I mean, he was a bodyguard. It wasn't like he was a businessman. He was just a bodyguard who worked his way up. Yeah, exactly. And convinced all these people to do all this crazy shit. And then the people he's killed. Yeah. Because there's another rumor that he's killed way more than what he's gone to prison for. I don't think he would say that, though. Why not? At this point, fuck it. Because then you get, I don't know. You can't, what are you going to go back to jail for? You're going to get another life sentence? Don't you get like shit to, yeah, maybe, I don't know. You've already got one, right? What would you do, I guess, is, is my question. Like, if you had life in prison, mm-hmm. do you want everybody to know, like, your entire life story and all that other shit? Do you say everything and just say, eh, here it is? It, this reminds me of the Melendez kids, where they Menendez. finally, that's it, whatever. Fuck you, it's all smart, <laughs> murdery. <laughs> you all smart and murdery, James. Do I have them up? I don't think you have yeah, them up. Blood Brothers. Oh, yeah, yeah, you do. Shit. <laughs> there was a point where they had said, you know, they tried to do this elaborate cover up or whatever, and then a book. They finally did a book. Was it two years ago, on the twenty fifth anniversary, or? Oh uh, yeah. And they were just like, "Yeah, here's the real story. We fucking did it." Right, but I I don't even think they really admitted in that why they did it. I think they did actually, because I, I remember hearing the interview. Remember that they were doing the interviews from jail, and he was just like, "Ah, dad was an asshole, and we kind of wanted to." Do shit and well, they're narcissistic, spoiled little pieces of shit brats. So I don't know if so they said that. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They still were making excuses. It's like talking to Lance Armstrong. You just cannot fucking get through. I mean, he will not say it. He will not say it. I, he said it on Rogan, I think. Right? No, he didn't. Okay. He said that yes, I did, but, but. Everyone was doing it. Every, there was so many other people right next to me. I wasn't the only one. You know? Right. That bullshit. Where it's like he says it, but he doesn't really say it. He's, he more talks about how he got coerced into doing it instead of him just being a piece of shit loser. Sorry, Lance. But anyway, so no, they were never really able to admit it. They admitted that they did it. Right. But they never, you know, with the certain type of person. And I guess I don't know what Suge Knight's specific personality type is. It, uh, narcissistic. 
Is it just sociopath? Is it, uh, I, I don't know. But if you are that, you always are that. So no matter what. So I don't know. He may still pick and choose. So why not, it, like if you're him, right? Mm-hmm. Why not just come out? If you're that narcissistic, you're serving life in jail. Why not I don't just know come if that's out? His, I'm just saying, I'm not, I don't know if that's his specific He's fucking neuroses, but. Not, not narcissistic as shit, but like. For, sure. Why not come out and say this, okay? Hey, man, I fucking killed Biggie because he killed Tupac. And that's it. Fuck you guys. That would be amazing to me. I mean, my God. It would be amazing. That would be like, holy shit. All right, great. Yeah, how'd you do it? Yeah, here's how I did it. I put a hit out and it was rad and it all went down, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's what I would want to hear. And I think, I think at this point, what does it matter, right? Just be, because now you can create a legend. If you have life in multiple, he's, I think he's serving like two life sentences or something. Mm-hmm. If you have multiple, who gives a shit at this point? Just come out and say, all right, cool, man. Here's the rest of it. Yeah, fuck, fuck him. I killed him. I think sh- I think Puff Daddy ordered this other thing. I I ordered this, so we're good, fam. And I did that. Then you can expand on that legend and just be like, "All right, man, why not?" I guess, right? If he did, man, that would be. If he did, but if he didn't, he would want people to still think that he did. So, do you know what I'm saying? But it'd be awesome if he just came out and said, "Yeah." And he did interviews from jail. If he did. About the movie. Or he didn't do these things, but likes the legend of people thinking he did, right? So he may not even be in a place to tell the truth because some of the truths are going to take away from his legend. Do you understand? Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. Like, if he tells the whole, whole truth, he may look like a fucking pussy in some instances and he may take away from, you know, rumors that people p- put on him and he takes it because it helped him get to where he was. If people think that even like, you know, in gangster times, fucking Italian mob times, people think that you killed people. It works better for you, whether you did it or not. Sure. Your legend is what gets you the power that you have. So if he's still in that mindset even in jail uh i don't think you'll get the truth man i would love it though that would be just the ultimate ball you're not move, dealing, in my opinion. yeah yeah well you're not dealing with a rational person either but uh it would be great if he got, got him some therapy in there got him some real come to jesus stuff of like just say it all that would be great let's say let's say he didn't want that right mm-hmm like you didn't want any come to Jesus thing. You just wanted to be fucking cool and go down as a legend. Why not? Just drop it. Just what I said. But yeah. Just drop the hammer and be like, all right, cool. Here's, here's the fuck what happened. It was, it was rad. I, I told you the story. I saw him in a premiere. Mm-hmm. He was so not give a fuck and so self-aware that he was Suge Knight. And it was because it was a, this was a premiere for my buddy's small independent movie. They spent like three and a half million on this indie. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I think Scott Kahn was the lead, right? Yeah. Yeah. Showed up right at the, in the, just because, it, just because it was a party. The party was on Cahuenga and uh, right underneath Hollywood, half block south of Hollywood. Outside, it was one of those clubs where you could see that there was people inside dancing. It's one of the few places in LA where you can see that there's, oh, there's see a, inside, yeah. Right, right. There's yeah. a party going on. There's a yeah. line in the street with a velvet rope and, right. and all of that shit right he just showed up not knowing who it was the uh, the movie was called dallas i think dallas 365 or 382 something like that i forget long time ago either way he just showed up because there was a party going on white girls in there dancing drinking and just parked his car at valet and no one stopped him to get in through the front door just walked in yeah and then just started i think and I don't have confirmation of this next part, but I think he told the DJ to start playing like fucking Snoop Dogg and Dre. Okay. Magically, it came on, and everybody started dancing, and everybody started dancing around him. Right. And it was just like, huh? I guess this is what we're doing. But could you imagine that? That it, it, no way. No. They would stop anybody and be like, "I need, some, I need yeah. some credentials." Sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. need to see something. 
let alone a white independent film with no black actors in it, probably. Um, hilarious, dude. He just hilarious. walked in. Baller status. Hey, there's a party going on. I'm Suge Knight. We're fine. Yeah. We're good, right? I can just pop on in. Nobody's going to give a shit. And he was. Yeah. So if he told all of those things where it was just like, man, I was invincible and here's, here's what really happened. Greatest movie Look, ever. I hope, but uh, I'm not really sure. Yeah. You're going to get what you want. We'll see. But Ray J pulled it off. Son of a bitch, man. That weird little fucking. He keeps doing it. Keeps doing it. He keeps. Everybody wears these goddamn headphones, too. I know. And I love them. Look, and even they, Bird. We've been a sponsor for. Investing in Bird is like, I know. how do you know to do that? Great. I don't know. Ray J does it, man. And he keeps doing it. So either way, this movie will be fun. Fun as shit. It's a hard one to cast, though. Suge Knight. Mm. Yeah, maybe. I wonder if you put on, uh, have LL Cool J get fucking no. 50, 70 pounds and do it. Mm-mm. No. No. I don't know. Who do, you, who do you get for that? You get an unknown. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. that you can get the same guy from the, the Dr. Dre movie. I, get an unknown. He looks like him, but he didn't sure. sound like him. So You can find someone out there. Yeah. You can find someone out there, I think. Um, so, I don't know. Crazy story, though. Ray J plays him. Yeah. <laughs> Ray J puts on 300 pounds. <laughs> Y'all want to come to death row? Tired of people dancing in the videos with deuces. <laughs> Maybe you can do it. In the videos. Throw your hat in the ring, yeah, bud. Right? It'd be real popular these days. <laughs> if they bleeped out the word it's cocker, acting. cock and Joe Cocker, yeah. yeah. Uh, they're definitely not letting me play all up in the videos, dancing. Come on over to Death Row. They're not going to let me do that? No. I don't think they'll let you do it here, actually. No, probably not. This yeah. show will probably get <laughs> shut down as we speak. <laughs> Uh, we'll get to the revolution and figure the day. Let's give it to fucking Colonel Tom Parker since we're talking about music today. Um, he's the guy that uh, allegedly found Elvis. Who knows if those stories are real either? Sure. Um, but they're doing a biopic on that as well right now. Yes, they are. So maybe we'll get the real story. I don't know. Uh, I it's Tom Hanks, right? Is playing Tom Hanks is playing Colonel Tom Parker, I believe. Probably. Yeah. I heard he's a dick in real life. Tom Hanks? Yeah. F- shut up. That's not. That's, that's not I true. Heard. That, that's no, what I heard. I've met Tom Hanks. He's not. That is not true. You take that back right now. I heard he's very uh, difficult. Him and Henry Winkler have had a feud for a really long time, and he's he's famously. What? It's starting to come out. I know it's starting to come out. He's never done anything this sexual. Is, not true. is it really? Tom Hanks. It's a blind item, so I'm not going to go any further. But but Who I've told heard. You that? I've heard. I want names. Things are coming out. Little stories, little bits and pieces. He's been in the business long enough that things are going to be perceived as, right? Mm -hmm. Asshole. But I'm just saying he's not the super nice, perfect man, gentleman. Hanks. Hanks. And again, nothing sexual. He's never done. There's the Me Too thing of him is true. He has never done anything like this. But things are starting to come out. I'm going to have to get confirmation on this, James. Okay. I'm going to have to get some confirmation. Rook it up. Yeah. Rook it up. Um, yeah. No. No. Dick. <laughs> Real dick. No way. Mm-hmm. Look it up, guys. Hanks. <laughs> You're lying, right? Hanks with an X. Nope. No shit. Mm-mm. Come on. All right. I'm, I'll look this up. There's, there's no way this is going to be true. That's one I won't, I won't believe. Okay, fine. Yeah. Believe what you want to believe, and that's what he hopes. Uh, and do. then also believe North Cutson. Believe, believe not North Cutson if I, if I start blowing up your, your Twitter. Yeah. yeah that's, if believe starts talking shit to you. What if there is, there is another believe Nor- North Cutson out in the world? There has to be. No, there doesn't have to be. <laughs> it definitely doesn't real have to be name. a believe North Cutson. Well, there's a Steve... North Kitson. Probably. Yeah, probably. Probably not a believe. B L E V E. Yeah. No. There's not a believe North Kitson <laughs> in the world. We'll look Every it up. Tom Hanks isn't an asshole. Hanks. Nope. Dick. 
Nope. Real dick. Not true. Anyways. Won't believe it. You're not going to hear it out of my mouth. I don't know, man. Uh, we're getting out of here on that note, Jabes. You're going to get yourself in trouble. There's no way that's true. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night.